It's game two of our twin bill, and it's starting right now as the Lake Erie Monarchs are facing off with the Saginaw Sugar Beets. Caleb Balgard in the batter's box. He will swing and foul one straight back. Nothing and one. We are underway in game two at 5.13 p.m. Here tonight between the Lake Erie Monarchs, who are 15 and 19, and the Saginaw Sugar Beets, who are 20 and 15. The pitch. And Balgard corks one to right field, coming in Fannin, then towards the line to make the catch for out number one. Adam Kowalski, the starting pitcher for the Saginaw Sugar Beats here in game back, two, as baseman, he will look to help five, his team bounce Will's back. And get a W after the Monarchs won four to three in 11 innings of game one. Again, uh, two seven-inning games were scheduled to play today, and uh, now it looks like we'll play at least a minimum of 18 as the fastball misses high to Will Prater, ball one. Will Prater, the starting second baseman here in game two. Also, Alex Lambeau due up in this inning for the Monarchs. 1-0. And it misses the zone. Two balls and no strikes. Still overcast here in Saginaw. The light rain has subsided for the moment. Fastball misses below the zone. 3-0 on Will Prater. Ready to conclude this season series here today between these two teams. The Sugar Beats looking just for a split. Strike called to Will Prater. Makes it three balls and a strike. And the pitch, strike called. Outside corner, near belt high, three and two. Will Prater with a 295 batting average and three RBIs this year. 21st game he has appeared in for the Monarchs. In 2018, three, two. Prater will swing and foul one back. Still a full count. Kowalski from Arlington Heights, Illinois. 6'3", 245 pounds. He's from Indiana Institute of Technology, upcoming senior at the university. 3-2 is a ball high and away. And Will Prater will draw a walk. First base runner for the Monarchs will begin the top of the first inning with one out, no score. The shortstop. Here's Alex Number Lambeau. Three, Alex Lambeau. Starting shortstop for the Monarchs, as he was in game one. He is in game two. Lambeau hitting 300 with two homers and 18 RBIs. 34th game Lambeau has played in out of Loyola Marymount University. He hails from Seattle, Washington. Pitch to the righty Lambeau. And he swings for the fences and misses. No balls and a strike. Pitching matchup of Adam Kowalski versus Lane Schnitz-Paxton. Should be a good one. This is the first start of the year for Adam Kowalski who does have one prior appearance against the Monarchs that came all the way back on June 29th, 01. And a foul ball hit to the right of home. No balls and two strikes. So still cloudy. It's right around 70 degrees. North-northeast winds at 8, which are blowing in towards home plate from left field. In his lead is Balgard. The 0-2 is low and away. Ball and two strikes on Alex Lambeau. Middle three in the batting order of the Monarchs is Jake Goudreau, Casey O'Laughlin, Andrew Dyke, Keegan Watson, Casey Slattery, Zach Schwarzenberger, the bottom three. And the 1-2. Check swing on a ball in the dirt. Lambeau did not offer. Two and two. Adam Kowalski has no record, a 1.74 ERA. 11th appearance, first start of 2018. 2-2, a high pop-up to right field. Coming in, Fannin, looking up into the cloudy sky, puts it away for out number two. Still at first is Caleb Balgard. No score, top one. 
And the batter is Jake Goudreau. Goudreau gets the start as the backstop for Lane Schnitz Paxton here today. The catcher, number 25, Jake Goudreau. Goudreau hitting 207, two homers and eight RBIs. Made an appearance in game one of this doubleheader as a pinch hitter. Swings right away at the first pitch and hits it behind home for strike one. Taking off on the play was Will Prater at first base. Prater drew a one-out walk against Kowalski in this inning. Oh, one. Goudreau, a fly ball towards right field. Going over Fannin near the fence, right up against the tarp roll and could not make the catch. It did stay in the field of play, did not go over the fence in the right field corner and nearly was caught by Fannin. Instead, it's strike two. Kowalski has a save in 10 and a third innings pitch, 10 strikeouts, seven walks, and has allowed just two hits through those 10 and a third innings pitched. So he's allowed now six more walks than hits this year. 0-2. Oh, Goudreau, fly ball deep right field. Back it goes. Fannin looking up. It's off one of the fences well over the fence in right field for a home run. Jake Goudreau tees off for the third time this season. RBIs 9-10. and 10, And the Monarchs will take the early lead here in game one of this, game two of this doubleheader by a count of two to nothing. What a blast by Jake Goudreau, hitting the 24th homer of the season for the Monarchs. And you know that power's there. It just hasn't come to fruition as much as the Monarchs would have liked this year, but he shoots one well over the fence to give him the lead. And now it's called strike to Casey O'Laughlin. The center fielder, number 33. So a two out, Casey two run O'Laughlin. homer. Off of Adam Kowalski. Now Laughlin puts one through the grass and heading towards second base. Underhanded toss from the second baseman O'Keefe to Cooper Marshall for the final out the here in the top of the first. But the Monarchs get a blast. A home run from Jake Goudreau puts them on the board first. Through a half inning, the Monarchs lead it by a count of 2 nothing. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com.
Strike one to Noah Marcou as the bottom of the first inning begins. Saginaw down 2-0 to the Monarchs. And another pitch is a called strike to Noah Marcou. Nothing in two. Lane Schnitz Paxton, the all-star, gets the start for the Monarchs. As working with the early lead, 0-2. And Marcou swings and misses. Three consecutive pitches. That's the first whiff for Marcou. And that will be the first down in the bottom of the first. Now Let's take a look at the Monarchs defensively. Schwarzenberger in left, O'Loughlin in center, Dyke is in right, Balgard at third, Lambeau at short, Prater at second, Cooper, Slattery at Marshall. first, and the battery of Lane Schnitz Paxton pitching and Jake Boudreau catching. Strike one to Cooper Marshall, went too far on a pitch. Nothing and one. A rough day for Noah Marcou. Saw his average drop to 278. Now Cooper Marshall, a ground ball up the middle. Ranging behind the bag is Prater off balance. Throw to first, not going to get there in time. Infield single for Cooper Marshall. And Saginaw will have their first hit of the game. A hit each way. Cooper Marshall on for Saginaw. 2 nothing. Monarchs. In front on the Jake Goudreau two-run homer. Now batting a junior from Adrian College, the center so fielder. Cooper Marshall will boost that team Brady leading 375 Wood. batting average up. And here's Brady Wood, starting center fielder in the three-hole. Misses inside, does Schnitz Paxton for ball one. Brady Wood with a 322 average, one home run, and 15 runs batted in. The pitch, high and tight to Wood, two and nothing. We're here at Cardinal Field on the campus of Saginaw Valley State University for this doubleheader. The Sugar Beats and Monarchs season series, the first in the rivalry history will conclude after this contest. 2-0 is inside and Wood's ahead, three and nothing. Lanchnitz Paxton misfiring. An intriguing season series it has been. The Monarchs have won the last two after dropping the opener of that season series on the 28th of June, 8-4. to 3-0, Wood looks at a strike. 3-1 and one is the count. Saginaw in the home white jerseys, white slacks, 3-1. And a swing and a foul tip. At home, three balls and two strike. The white slacks have a singular black stripe down the side. Sugar beets across their chest in green with black trim. And on the backs of the jerseys, last names in black, the numbers in black. 3-2. Wood takes ball four outside. So a single and a walk consecutively with one out here in the bottom of the first. Let's put runners at first and second. Saginaw with the tying run already on base. A junior at Here's Tech. Sean Fannin. The right fielder, number 19, Sean Right fielder Fannin. will hit cleanup in this game. Fannin with a 259 batting average, three home runs and 13 runs batted in. So a bit of a rough start for Schnitz Paxton. Looks to get out of the jam here. Fastball high to Fannin for ball one. Saginaw also has the black caps with sugar beets on the back. White on the front with the sugar bee logo and black lids. 1-0. Fannin with a cork fly ball to center field. And ranging in to make the catch is O'Loughlin. Fannin didn't get all that one. Out number two. Runners still at first and second. 2 nothing. Lake Erie already in front here in the bottom of the first. The third baseman. From the batters, Ryan Robinette. Ryan Robinette. Robinette gets the start at third after being the Sugar Beats second baseman in game one. Robinette hitting 318. The homer in 17 batted in. Fastball's outside. Ball one from Lane Schnitz Paxton. Umpires for this game, Barry Gross behind home plate, calling the balls and strikes. Frank Barquette, the base umpire today. He's situated behind Lane Schnitz Paxton. 1-0, swing and a miss by Robinette. 
A ball and a strike. Right after the conclusion of game one, there was a little more of a steady rain shower for a couple minutes here at the ballpark. Just getting everyone a little more wet. Fastball high, two and one on Robinette. But nothing that put the field in danger or this game in danger at all. It's been on and off, light rain all day here in Saginaw. 2 1. A chopper towards the third base on deck circle where Daniel Page is. Two balls, two strikes. Getting his lead at second is Marshall. Wood getting his lead at first. From the stretch, Schnitz Paxton throws. And he skips one into Robinette. He's also away from him. And Ryan held off. Full count. Runners will have the opportunity to take an extra step towards their next bases. Payoff pitch. Robinette chops one over towards third. Balgard will just go to the third base bag and step on it. Fielder's choice, five unassisted. Cooper Marshall forced Boy, out of there, and the inning there will end. Inning, Saginaw no gets a hit, one and we'll leave two men on. We're through one in game two, two. Monarchs we'll two, and the Sugar Beats nothing. You are listening to play. Monarchs Baseball. Andrew Dyke, Keegan Watson, Casey Slattery will take their cuts here in the second inning. Strike one to Andrew Dyke. Starts things off against Adam Kowalski. Monarchs lead it two to nothing as the second is beginning. And Dyke with another swing and a miss at a high fastball. No balls and two strikes. Andrew Dyke hitting... 254 this year with three homers and 12 RBIs. That's going to drop a little bit as he swings and misses for strike three. Adam Kowalski picks up his first strikeout. One down here in the top of the second. Now scheduled a hit for the Monarchs. Now Keegan and Watson will come University up for the first time. Uh, the University of Nebraska's the Keegan Watson hitting 170. No homers and four Keegan RBIs. Watson. Nobody on. One out in the second. Strike one to Keegan Watson from Adam Kowalski. Could not sidestep that two-run homer from Jacob Drow in the first inning. Oh, one Watson puts one in the air to right, moving towards the corner. Fannin on his horse, and he will extend and make the catch right before he got to the foul line. Fannin showing his range, extended the arm out, and made a beautiful play. And Keegan Watson is robbed of extra bases potentially. Now ready to hit for the Monarchs. Two up, two down here in the University second. California, Lake Erie up two zip. The first baseman, and Casey Slattery four, will take his Casey cuts. Slattery. Casey Slattery hitting 111 with four RBIs this year. 
And on the left side against the righty Kowalski, fastball for strike one. Slattery from Cal Berkeley, the Golden Bears still trying to find the swing here in 2018, the summer ball portion of it. Oh, one. Way out in front of a breaking ball, no balls and two strikes. Slattery did not play this year for Cal. He redshirted. And so this is his first action he's really seen game-wise in a routine fashion since high school. 0-2, swing and a miss. Ball gets past the catcher, Howell, and to the backstop, and that will allow Slattery to get on base. Even though Kowalski will pick up his second strikeout, the inning will continue. On what will be, I believe, a wild pitch. And it will be on Kowalski. Now batting a sophomore. Defensively for Saginaw, Marku, Wood, Fannin, left to right in the outfield. Robinette, Page, left side of the infield at third and short. O'Keefe and Marshall at second and first. Zach Schwartzenberger takes a ball inside. Toledo, Kowalski and Howell, the, the battery seven, here today. Zach Schwarzenberger. 1-0 count on Schwarzenberger, who's swatting 244 with six driven in. 1-0. Rather, the 1-0 oh, yeah, is back to the mound. Kowalski will soft toss it over to first base. Marshall waiting on the bag. That's the final out in what is a scoreless second inning, and Kowalski just avoids getting the minimum. So he gets four outs in the inning. Bottom of the second is next, Monarchs two, and the Sugar Beats nothing. This is your home for Monarchs baseball. Daniel Page hoping to get a Saginaw rally going in the second. Ball high to him, 1-0. Saginaw trails Lake Erie 2-0 here in the bottom of the second inning in game two. 1-0 from Schnitz Paxton. Swing and a miss. Behind the fastball, a ball and a strike. Daniel Page was involved in that first game, although did not make the start. Page hitting 143 with four homers and 11 batted in. 1-1 one, one is low and away. Two balls and a strike. Game one of the doubleheader lasting just under three hours. It was an 11-inning game that the Monarchs prevailed, 4-3, to 2-1. To and Page takes down low. Three balls and a strike. Although all things considered for an 11-inning game under three hours, not too bad. Now, of course, it wasn't planned to be an 11-inning game. 3-1 fastball is high and away, and Daniel Page will draw a walk to begin the bottom of the second. Two walks already for Lane Schnitz-Paxton, and that is something that he has usually avoided now batting a here sophomore at through his all-star campaign the for the Monarchs. Number eight, Matthew Houle. Matthew Houle will step in next, the catcher for the Saginaw Sugar Beets. Fastball outside corner, strike one. Houle did not see action in game one. 
He's here in game two, making his 16th appearance of the season. 333 average, six RBIs. Pitch to Hool, outside and low. Ball and a strike. I'm trying to recall if we saw Matthew Hool earlier on this season in Flat Rock. And I don't believe we did, actually. And here's a, a line drive towards left, a base hit for Hool. Up to second goes Daniel Page. First two men are on here in the bottom of the second for the Sugar Beets as they pick up their second hit of the contest. They are out hitting the Monarchs two to one, but trail on the scoreboard. A sophomore at a two to nothing. College, the designated hitter, number 16, Matthew Sulcanen. Matthew Sulcanon, the DH, will step in now for the Sugar Beets on the left side against the righty Schnitz Paxton. And he'll swing right away and foul one back to the backstop. Nothing in one. 207 average, five RBIs for the left handed hitter. He's from Aquinas College, a sophomore, a local from Saginaw. Oh, one, high and away. Ball and a strike on him. First year head coach Kyle Floyd looking on, hoping his sugar beets can recover after the first loss of the day. The one, one. It's outside, two balls and a strike. On the other side, Tim Brown for the Monarchs in his first year coming over from the Vermont Mountaineers, where he was the skipper last year. Bradley Merritt, also the uh, first-year pitching coach, has played and coached overseas. 2-1 is high, 3-1. Nobody out here in the second, 2-0 Saginaw trailing. Of course, Dale Gray, who heads up the field ops for the Monarchs home games, he is first base coach on the road and at home. 3-1 popped up, foul. This little cannon out of play. That will head towards the softball field and actually land in it. The softball field here at Saginaw Valley State located right next to the baseball stadium. The football stadium also not too far away either, just over a rolling hill. 3-2. Another pop-up will make its way out of play near the batting cages on the third base side. Three balls and two strikes. Cardinal Fields dimensions 332 down the lines, 396 to dead center. Division two Saginaw Valley State. Baseball plays their home games here. Member of the GLIAC. 3-2 and another foul ball. He keeps battling. Eighth pitch of the at-bat will be coming from Lane Schnitz Paxton. Pitch count a little more elevated than we're used to seeing from Schnitz Paxton. This will be his 35th pitch of the game already. And he has no outs in the second. He's going to step off and motion Page back to second base. Page is at second. Hool is at first. Three, two. Rung him up inside corner. Close pitch. First strikeout for, make it that second strikeout for Lane Schnitz Paxton. He also struck out Noah Marcou, who is the leadoff man in this Saginaw Sugar Beets order. Now batting, a sophomore. But the number nine man's going to come up first. Here's Sean O'Keefe. Number two, Sean O'Keefe. Played in part of the first game of this twin bill. Gets the start here at second base and batting ninth. Bat right-handed against Lane Schnitz Paxton. Pitch to him over the outside corner, strike one. Sean O'Keefe hitting 162 with three runs batted in. Was hitless. And a couple of plate appearances in the last game. Oh, one skips in. Nice block by Goodrell. Ball and a strike. And of course, 
This is the Saginaw Sugar Beats Sean O'Keefe, not the Monarchs Sean O'Keefe, who has not played the past couple days for the Monarchs. And no one played yesterday with the rain out here. That's why we're playing two today. 1-1 one, one put hard on the ground, third base side, and into the Saginaw dugout, a ball and two strikes. 2-0 two Monarchs in the second. Schnitz Paxton trying to work out of a bit of trouble. A leadoff walk and then a single. Keith situating himself in the batter's box. Schnitz Paxton look towards second and he will step off again. Just keeping Daniel Page close to the bag. One, two. O'Keefe rung up, strike three at the knees. Breaking ball over the outside corner. Three strikeouts for Lane Schnitz Paxton. Two outs here in the bottom of the second, and that'll bring up Noah Marcou. Marcou over one, went down swinging his first time. Boy, it's been a rough day for Noah Marcou. In the first game here today, he was 0 for 5 with the golden sombrero, striking out three times. He was also hit by a pitch, and he struck out to start this game. He'll foul one back, nothing in one. That's not what you're used to seeing from Marcou, who has been a guy who can average near 300. Team leader in RBIs with 34, six home runs. It's been a steady part of this Saginaw Sugar Beats team all year long. 0-1, breaker low and in. Ball and a strike on Schnitz Paxson. Has a nice two-seamer, a curveball, a slider. Can work a change up in. It's Paxton from the stretch. Another 1-1, one, one, blew it by him. Good fastball that came back over the inside. Ball and two strikes. It's Paxton a pitch away from getting out of this mini jam here in the second. Shakes off one side. Now him and Goudreau agree and time is called. Page at second. Howell at thirst at first. A two nothing game. The pitch is high and outside. Even up the count. Two balls and two strikes on Marcou. Monarchs in the road grays once again here in this second contest of the day. Two two. Liner right at Slattery, who's able to knock it down. Schnitz Paxton dashing to get to the bag, but it'll be Slattery by himself. He made a fine defensive play For the on a beats, screamer the off the bat. Inning, no runs, a hit, no errors, so the Sugar the Beats will leave base. a couple men on. After they do get their second hit of Cardinal the game, Stadium. but do not score. score We're through two at Cardinal two Field. Monarchs in front, nothing. two nothing. You are listening to Monarchs Baseball.
Caleb Balgar leads off the third for the Monarchs, who are in front two to nothing. Here's the pitch to him. He swings and lines one just fouled on the third base line. Frozen rope down the third base line. Just out in front of it, no balls and a strike. Balgar today 0 for 1 with a fly out to right to start off the game. Monarchs got a two-run homer from Jake Goodrell in the first inning. And that is held up to this point. 0-1 is high. Make it a ball and a strike. Adam Kowalski going just over the 30 pitch mark. Had a quick second inning to Kowalski. 1-1. And Bounard chases one that's just above the dirt. Here are his ankles. 1-2. and two. Monarchs getting set to head back south. And then five of the last six will be played at home at Flat Rock Field. 1-2, grounded foul to the left of the third base line. Still 1-2 and two on Balgard. Two against the Grand Lake Mariners, Tuesday, Wednesday. Muskegon Clippers come to town Thursday, Friday. Galleon will be a home-and-home home series Saturday in Flat Rock, Sunday in Galleon. 1-2. And line back to the screen, a foul ball. Count remains the same. So we hope that you uh, come on out to the ballpark. There will be a lot of fun happening this week. And you're uh, missing out on opportunities to see your Monarchs for the last time in 2018 if you don't come on out. The Galleon game on Sunday, the finale on the road, will be at 4 o'clock. 1-2 to Balgard. High fly ball hit deep to left field. Marcoux backing up, still backing up near the corner, makes the catch. Nice contact from Balgard, but he didn't quite get all of it, and it more was a golf swing as he propelled that baseball out near the 332 sign in the left field corner. So there's one out, top of the third, and here comes Will Prater, who walked and scored in the first inning today. Monarchs ahead, 2-0 in the third. Prater to the lefty against the righty, Kowalski. Kowalski pitches, it's bunted, fouled on the third base line. Nifty idea from Prater, but just couldn't quite execute. No balls and a strike. Saginaw, of course, entered the day just a half game back of the St. Clair Green Giants for second place in the division, two and a half back of Lima. But after the setback in game one, they are now three back of Lima and one back of St. Clair, although the Green Giants are playing two today as well. 0-1. Oh, and line back to the netting behind home by Prater. No balls and two strikes. So we'll get you a scoreboard update coming up here quickly in the bottom half of the inning. Monarchs and Sugar Beets, the first teams to get baseball started, though, in the league today. 0-2. Prater nails one to left. That will drop a couple hops and into the glove of Marku for a base hit. And Will Prater's on for the second time. Monarchs get hit number two. Now batting from Seattle, Washington. One out, top the of the third. Stop. Monarchs number by three, two. Alex Here's Alex Lambo. Flew out to right in his initial at bat in the first. Decent lead for Prater. Ball is high from Kowalski to his catcher. Cool. One ball and no strikes. Goudreau still has the guards on. He's in the on-deck circle. One up. High and tight to Lamba. Two and nothing to count. Sugar Beets will have another game coming up on Wednesday at Dow Diamond. Home of the Great Lakes Loons in Midland. 2-0 is fouled away. Two balls and a strike. With their upcoming series. Of course, the uh, 
Monarchs were very fortunate to be able to play at the home of the Toledo Mudhens last Sunday, a 6-2 victory over the Irish Hills Leprechauns. 2-1, a fly ball again hit to right, backing up a couple steps is Fannin. Now he'll move slightly towards the line and make the catch. Two flyouts in the inning surrounding a Will Prater single. Now he remains the at first. To Top of the third, Monarchs two, Massachusetts. Sugar Beats nothing. The catcher, and the batter is Jake Goudreau. Jake Goudreau. Goudreau today, one for one with that two-run homer. That came back in the first. And now here comes Coach Floyd. Looks like he's going to take the baseball from Kowalski. This was his first start of the year, and... He hasn't really pitched over two innings at all at this point in the season, so it looks like he has reached his pitch count. And we'll have a new Sugar Beets pitcher right after this break. Monarchs in the lead, 2-0, with two down in the third and a man on. We'll be back to talk about that new pitcher next. You are listening to Monarchs Baseball. Matthew Blunk, the new pitcher, a lefty against Jake Goudreau. Strike one, they throw down, and trying to steal is Will Prater. He's out of there easily. So just like that, Matthew Blunk throws one pitch. It was a strike to Goudreau, and that will do it. So the Monarchs will not score in the top of the third. They don't take advantage of a one-out single. Middle of the third, Monarchs two, and the Sugar Beats nothing. This is your home for Monarchs baseball.
the first baseman. Lane Schnitz Paxton already with 44 From pitches. Tennessee, Michigan, he will deal a 2-3-4 two, in Marco. the Saginaw Sugar Beets order. Bottom of the third inning set to begin. Monarchs two and the Sugar Beets nothing. Cooper Marshall, first pitch to him. Down low, ball one. Marshall today with a single and was out five unassisted on the fielder's choice hit by Ryan Robinette to end the inning. 1-0, and that's put on the ground to third. Balgarn has it, has to throw across quickly and does. 5-3 put out of Marshall for out number one. Let's take a peek at those scores going on around the Great Lakes Summer Collegiate League. We mentioned the St. Clair Green Giants yeah, playing to two hit. today. And the Breaking first game Michigan. went in favor of the, the Green Giants by a score of 2-1. to one. That game was scoreless through the first several innings. Green Giants getting two in the bottom of the third, and it held up. Brady Wood takes strike one. Wood, oh, rather, 0 for 0 with a walk. Gibson Krasminski walked with the bases loaded in that game. Ball bounces in, one and one in the third. And then Miguel Cienfuegos walked as well. So two bases loaded walks come back to hurt the Xenia Scouts as the Green Giants win it 22 to 14, or improved to 22 and 14. Ball down the third baseline by Wood. Throw on line for the out. And Wood is the second out here in the bottom of the third in a 2 nothing game. Here's Sean Fannin, 0 for 1 with a fly out. Next to hit for the so the scouts and Green Giants will begin game one, Michigan, game two shortly. The right fielder, number 19, Other games Sean in progress. Fannin. Muskegon Clippers lead the Grand Lake Mariners, 7 to 2 in the seventh. Hamilton Joes won. Southern Ohio Copperheads nothing, top of the fourth. Jazz and Steam trying to get underway. Bouncer into Fannin for ball one. Mariners and Clippers are playing two today. Leprechauns and Locos will play one, a 7 o'clock start in Lima at Simmons Field. Galleon Graders will host the Licking County Settlers at 7.05. Another ground ball. That will get past the glove of Balgarn and into left field for a base hit. And that will be the third hit of the game for the Sugar Beats. They have a hit in each of the first three innings. That one slid past the glove of Balgarn, out just out of his reach. Now batting from Joes and Copperhens are also playing two baseman, today. Number 27, so Ryan Southern Ohio Robinette. will hopefully begin that second game at 7.35 tonight. Ryan Robinette, another plate appearance, grounded into a fielder's choice his first time. Ball one outside, one and oh. Cincinnati trying to open up some space in the South Division between them and Southern Ohio. Game and a half lead for Cincinnati at this point. They are three up in the win column. Foul tip back to the screen. Strike one on Robinette. Galleon and Hamilton right in the thick of things for that second or that third final playoff spot. Galleon a game under 500 at 16 and 17. And Hamilton's a game or a half game behind them. Robinette turns away from strike two on a slider that came back over the inside. One and two. Saginaw, despite the loss in game one, still a two and a half game lead over Irish Hills and Muskegon for the third spot in the north. Pop up near the fencing of the dugout on the third base side. Balgard ran out of room. Ball and two strikes with two outs. And a man at first in the bottom of the third. 2-0, Monarchs in front. Lima 23-12, and 12, the leaders in the north. St. Clair 22-14, and 14, a game and a half back of them, and Saginaw three back of Lima. Line drive, hit past Lambeau and into left center field for a base hit. O'Loughlin will get to that one. And that also will be a base hit. So the fourth hit of the game and second of the inning for the Sugar Beets. Another one that was very similar to the ball. It just was able to get past Balgard. 
the batter before from Sean Fannin, who's able to get all the way to third on that play. Robinette did the same thing to Alex Lambeau. Runners at first and third with two down in the third, 2 nothing. Monarchs lead, but Schnitz-Paxton having to deal with more base runners. Pass ball high and away to Daniel Page, ball one. Page walked to begin the second inning. Seven inning game, two. We're here on the bottom of the third. 1-0 and Page puts it in the air. To the right of the first baseline, this will stay in the field of play. Casey Slattery reaches up, makes a one-handed catch, and that's all in the bottom of the third for the Saginaw Sugar Beets. The Sugar Beets they get two the hits and leave two no men runs, on. Two We're hits, through three no here in game two. two. Monarchs two, well, Sugar Beets base. nothing. This and is your home for Lake Erie Monarchs baseball, monarchsradio.com. Ball high to Jake Goudreau starts off the top of the fourth inning and the Monarchs are in the lead 2-0. 1-0 has popped up to left. Marcou trotting in. We'll put it away, out number one. And Matthew Blunk will get his second out that he has on his docket here. Now climbing into the batter. He also was able to get Ellen, Will Illinois. Prater the center fielder, to uh, be out via Casey a caught stealing O'Loughlin. to end the third inning. Ball to O'Loughlin to start off this at bat, 1-0. 4-3 ground out for O'Loughlin in the first. Blunk works quickly and delivers ball two. Out of the line, the pitch. And a little chopper hit off of O'Loughlin's right foot. Spins and dances around, trying to walk it off. Two balls and a strike. So the final numbers on Adam Kowalski here today, 42 pitches through two and two-thirds innings, face 12. Two strikeouts, a walk, two hits, two earned runs, and a wild pitch. And if the score does not change or the Monarchs stay ahead in the game, then Kowalski would be saddled with his first loss of the season. 2-1. Over the inside corner, that was a beauty from Blunk. 2-2. Two two. So he gives way to the Ann Arbor native, Matthew Blunk, an upcoming senior from Lawrence University. Pitch outside, full count to O'Loughlin. 5'10", 165 pounds. Delivers. And a high fastball that O'Loughlin couldn't lay off of. Strike two, make it strike three for out number two. Blunk picks up his first strikeout. Now and that is the third of the game Auburn, for the Sugar Beats. Illinois, 
Right Here's fielder, Andrew Dyke. Four, he was Andrew one of those two strikeout Dyke. victims of Adam Kowalski during his tenure on the mound. Two out, nobody on in the fourth. Fastball high and away, ball one. Monarchs in front, 2 nothing. Flunk from the windup of the pitch. And Dyke fouls one away. One and one. Flunk is 21 years old. He turned 21 on April 10th of this year. On the way. Little low. Just low. Two and one. Blanc making his 15th appearance. He also has started four games for the Sugar Beets. Five and one record, 5.04 ERA. 2-1 is launched to center. A base hit. Hit it hard right back up the middle. Andrew Dyke picks up a single in the third hit of the game for Lake Erie. Who has a 2-0 lead in the fourth. I'm looking to add on. Now batting. From Fountain Town, Indiana. Now Keegan Watson hitter, will get another at bat. Keegan Watson. Watson flew out to right, was robbed of a hit in the second inning. He'll foul off the first pitch from Blunk. Fannin extended his right arm all left arm all the way out to make the catch right near the right field corner. Oh one. Breaker doesn't come back over the outside. One and one. Keegan Watson DHing. He's done some pitching this year, just like he did at Nebraska. Plays the outfield and bats on the right side. 1-1. One, one. And Watson with a soft liner to center. Wood will come in and make the play. Out number three. And the Monarchs waste a two-out single in the top of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth coming up here at Cardinal Field in Saginaw. Two-nothing Monarchs on your home for Monarchs baseball. Pool, Sulkinen, and O'Keefe, 7, 8, 9 in the order for Saginaw. 2 nothing game, Monarchs lead. And Matthew Houle will take strike one at the knees. No balls in a strike. Houle with a single back in the second against Lane Schnitz-Paxton. 0-1, skips low and away for ball one. 60 pitches for Lane Schnitz-Paxton, and he's now just three-plus innings into his start. 1-1. One, one. Chopper at the plate, foul. 1-2. and two. Although he has shown to be a workhorse this year for the Monarchs. He's gone over 110 pitches a couple times. So if he can settle in, he could probably do the same thing here today. Pitches high and away, two balls and two strikes. But he has <coughs> fallen behind counts a little more than usual. On this Sunday afternoon, 2-2, two -two, and Houle will ground one foul on the third base line. Count is still two balls and two strikes. 
We are now exactly an hour into game number two. Monarchs getting their only two runs way back in the top of the first on the Goodrow two-run blast. 2-2. Two -two. Grounder up the middle, base knock. Hit number five for the Saginaw Sugar Beets. And that is the second hit for Hool. He put them where they ain't. Bottom of the fourth begins with that single. Now climbing into the batter's box. Two zip monarchs, and here's Matthew Salkinen. The designated hitter. The DH Matthew Salkinen, Matthew 0 for Sulkinen. 1. As he struck out looking back in the second. First base side of the rubber, and he deals low and in, missing with the slider. 1 0. Monarchs first visit ever to this area to play a GLSCL game, Saginaw's inaugural year in the league, and it's panned out pretty well. 1-0 put on the ground towards second. Prater's gonna have only one play, it's to first. And he gets his man. Salkin and out of there. Hool will move up to second. Bottom of the fourth continues with one out. Two nothing. Monarchs in the now lead. For the Sugar Beats, and here's Sean O'Keefe. O'Keefe was rung Number up his two, first time on Sean four pitches. Number nine man in the order. O'Keefe doesn't offer at the first pitch strike from Lane Schnitz Paxton. The numbers on Schnitz Paxton this year four and two record. 3.82 earned run average. This is his seventh start of the campaign. 0-1. And O'Keefe with a liner hit towards right center. They're dropping fast, and it's heading towards the warning track. Sean O'Keefe is on his way to second with an RBI double as Matthew Hool comes around. And Saginaw cuts the lead in half. It's 2-1 to one here in the bottom of the fourth. Sean O'Keefe picks up his fourth RBI of the season. Placed it nicely in right center Lola field. Fielder, number five, to drive Lola in a run. Marcoux. Really barreled up that pitch nicely, did O'Keefe. Now, Lane Schnitz Paxson has to deal with that top of the lineup, Noah Marcoux. Pitch misses high and outside, ball one. Marcoux 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. Slattery knocked down a really hard hit grounder right at him when Marcoux hit in the second inning. Two seamer over the inside corner. One and one. That two seam fastball is so devastating to lefties. Looks like it's coming right at him and then can cross right back over the plate. And it tails away from them as well. It's Paxton with a little move towards second just to get O'Keefe back to the bag. Schnitz Paxton throws, and Marcoux will tap one foul off the fencing of the first base dugout. Ball and two strikes. Monarchs had about a two-hour journey from near the Flat Rock area to get up here to Saginaw today. And it was raining lightly almost all the way up. Worried that the first game may get delayed, but it did not. We got started essentially right on time at 1.40 this afternoon. 1-2. And bounces away, a dirt ball. Allowing Sean O'Keefe to advance to third on the wild pitch. First for Lane Schnitz Paxton in this game. So the tying run is 90 feet away from home. We're just one out here in the fourth. 2 1 Saginaw trails. Noah Marcoux will now make the infield come in. Schnitz Paxton from the set delivers. Marcoux, fastball high and tight. Full count. Uh, 
3-2 to Marku. Grounded, nice diving play by Slattery. Can't come home though. O'Keefe just too fast. As Marku puts it in play, three unassisted, he's out, but it's an RBI put out for Marku, who will drive in his 35th run of the season. And the Saginaw Sugar Beats have battled back with two runs here in the bottom of the fourth to tie the game up at two. Well, the drawn in infield didn't quite work despite the ground ball hit. Slattery had to make a diving stop just to keep it on the infield. Ball one, a slider outside to this Cooper Marshall, one and oh. Marshall with a single and a ground out here in this game. One oh. Fastball, knee high, strike. Evens up the count one and one. Sugar Beats now out hitting the Monarchs six to three. In a tie game. Pitch misses high and away, and it's two and one to Cooper Marshall. We're here in the fourth. Marshall. Well, they pop up to left center. O'Laughlin and Schwarzenberger moving towards it. It's O'Laughlin's ball and play to make, and he does so. Out number three. That's all in the second. The but beats. two so runs scored on two innings. hits and no one left runs. on. At the end of four Sugar innings, it's a brand new ball game. The Saginaw Sugar Beats have tied it at two as we head to the fifth. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com. California, the first base Fifth base. inning Number of game score, two of the doubleheader. Saginaw and Lake Erie in a familiar position, tied at two. Kevin Peel here with you. Thanks so much for tuning in. MonarchsRadio.com. Matthew Blunk to work. And on the wrists of Slattery, he's able to pop up the first pitch of the fifth inning and out of play. Slattery struck out in the second, but reached on a wild pitch from... Adam Kowalski, 0-1, and it's inside, even up the count, 1-1. One one. So it was the ever-ordinary four-out inning for Adam Kowalski, who then had to get Zach Schwarzenberger to ground out to end the frame. 1-1 one, one is inside, two balls and a strike on Slattery. Wow, the players today paying close attention to the Open championship, pitch outside, three balls and a strike. Especially Brad Merritt, the pitching coach, and Logan Schmidt having numerous talks about it. 3-1, back to the mound. Leap by Blunk to get it into his glove. Toss across to first for out number one here in the fifth. Now batting for the Five outs now for Matthew Celine, Blunk fielder, in his relief appearance. Seven, a bullpen game Zach for the Sugar Beats. Monarchs throwing their ace, Lane Schnitz Paxton. There's Zach Schwarzenberger, who also has grounded back to the pitcher today. Ball one outside to him. Schwarzenberger is a switch hitter, so a bat on the right side against the lefty Blunk. 1 0 is outside. Two balls and no strikes. Very cloudy, but. Pleasant temperature-wise, just below 70 degrees here on this Sunday. 
2-0. Grounded past the diving third baseman Robinette and into left field. Base knock for Zach Schwarzenberger, his second of the day, first in this game. And in the series so far, he is two for six. The Monarchs get a one-out man on in the fifth. Tied with Saginaw at two apiece. Four hits now for the Monarchs. Balgard swings right away and hits a high towering pop-up. Shallow left center coming in is Wood. Puts it away, one-handed grab. For out number two. Staying put at first is Zach Schwarzenberger. So a nice quick out for Matthew Blunk. The second baseman, number five, Will Prater. Now bring up Will Prater. Walking a single for Prater today. He also scored the first run of the game. Throw over to first to check Schwarzenberger, and he's back safely. Base running has not been a strong point for the Monarchs, really as of late, but especially not today. Monarchs were 0 for 3 trying to steal bases in the first game, and they're 0 for 1 in game 2. Brad Merritt likes to get aggressive and send guys. But the catchers, Cool and Sharping, have been on to them. Prater. Pops one up into foul ground, third base side. Robinette and Marcou far away from the baseball when it lands. One strike on Will Prater from Western Carolina. He showed up to the ballpark extra early on Friday, 5-15. Uh, no batting practice on Friday at Flat Rock Field because of the rain that was in the area. So then the players were told they didn't have to arrive until 7, but Prater showed up at 5.15. Well, one is high and away. A ball and a strike. So he was holding down the fort for a little while, checking out some of the youth baseball going on. There was a tournament on Friday at Flat Rock Community Fields. 1-1. One, one. Inside half, just above the knees, strike two. 1-2 and two on Will. Flat Rock Community Fields, a popular place for youth baseball tournaments. Monarchs have had a couple games pushed back to eight this year because of them. Curveball low and away from Blunk. Prater lays off, two balls, two strikes. The man at first is Zach Schwarzenberger, two outs, top five in a 2-2 game. The pitch, runner takes off, and Prater fouls it away. Stay alive. At two and two. It was an 8.05 start on Friday. Got it done in two and a half hours, and the Monarchs fell to the Lima Locos by a final score of nine to four to drop the season series to Lima. Throw over to first. Schwarzenberger just got back in a close play. Blunk <laughs> nearly picked him off. Just getting back was the UT Rocket. 2-2. Two -two. Another foul ball on the ground. Heading towards the third base dugout of the Saginaw Sugar Beets. Still 2-2. Two two. Off day tomorrow for the Monarchs. And then that final six-game stretch Tuesday through Sunday. Playoffs right around the corner, about nine days away. Throw over to first to keep Schwarzenberger in check from Blunk. Lefty-lefty matchup. The southpaw readies himself on the hill and throws to Prater. And it hit him in the helmet, but it was a, a breaker, so it wasn't a very hard pitch. But the hit batsman will allow the inning to continue, and Schwarzenberger will move up to second base. The shortstop, number three. First hit batsman Alex either way Lambo. in this game. So the rally continues. First and second, top five. Two outs. 
And the Monarchs and Sugar Beets are deadlocked at two. Alex Lambeau with two flyouts to right today. Wants to put one down in the outfield in fair territory. Try and give the Monarchs the lead back with good speed at second. Pitch was high ball one. Blunk ready with the second offering. And sure, Lambeau gets well underneath it. Foul ground, first base side, and it will go over the first base dugout of the Monarchs. Poole and Marshall both went to take a look. Even count at one and one. No one warming up in the Saginaw bullpen. Matthew Blunk will have worked over two innings if he can get this final out. And he might here. Ground ball right to third. And going to the bag is Robinette to force Zach Schwarzenberger. And that's all the Monarchs will do in the top of the fifth. They get a single and a hit batsman, but do not score. Middle of the fifth inning here at Cardinal Field. Saginaw looking for its first lead of game two, tied at two. You are listening to Monarchs Baseball. Lane Schnitz Paxton back at it in the fifth against Brady Wood. Slider outside, ball one. Sugar Beats and Monarchs tied at two in the series finale and the season finale between these two opponents. 1-0 and Wood with a big swing, cuts it foul on a play, well to the right of home, one and one. Brady Wood with a walk and a ground out. Out of the windup, the 1-1. One, one. And just nicked him. Hit batsman for Lane Schnitz Paxton, his first of this contest. And a leadoff man is on for Saginaw in their half of the, the right fifth. Fielder, number 19, Monarch's Sean already getting a an arm up and warming down the first base side. Sean O'Keefe is the man who is up and tossing. Here's Sean Fannin, a fly out and a single for Fannin in this game. A little delay as Fannin gets the signs from his third base coach. And 1-0, the first pitch is down low to make it 1-0 on Sean Fannin. It's been an interesting week for Lane Schnitz Paxton, who threw so well last Sunday evening at Fifth Third Field, and they win over the Leprechauns. 1 0 bounces in the dirt, two balls and no strikes. Runner will take off. And a wild pitch will enable Brady Wood to get to second base. He's potentially the tie breaking run here in the fifth. 
that night at fifth third field, 116 pitches thrown in seven innings for Lane Schnitz Paxton. 2 0. Fly ball hit towards left center field, coasting over Schwarzenberger, but it will be O'Laughlin who calls him off to make the catch. And now Brady Wood's going to be out trying to advance to third. And so a double play will really help Lane Schnitz Paxton out right here. O'Laughlin showing off his arm and making a play. And now a double play will empty the bases for Ryan Robinette in a 2-2 game in the bottom of the fifth. Robinette swing, deep fly ball, left field. Schwarzenberger backing up to the fence, looking up, and it hops off the fence. Ryan Robinette will coast into second with a double, his second hit of the game. But unfortunately for Saginaw, if Brady Wood would not have been cut down trying to advance to third, the Sugar Beats would be in the lead right now. But they'll take the double from Ryan Robinette. Daniel Payne. And the inning will continue. Robinette has his sixth two-base hit of the season and second of the day. He also had one in the first game today. Now Daniel Page will take his cuts, a walk and a pop out for Page in this game. Fastball away for ball one. Sean O'Keefe has been tossing to Griffin Mazur quickly, so he is probably not too far off from being ready if they need him. 1-0. And this one's aired backwards behind home, a ball and a strike on Daniel Page. Great clouds all around, but a pretty comfortable evening, maybe a bit of a chill in the air here in Saginaw as we play in the fifth inning of game two. 1-1 one, one is a bouncer at home. They throw over to third, and Ryan Robinette will get over to third base. On what may be a wild pitch. Schnitz Paxton struggling a little bit with the command. Throws to Page, swing and a miss. Blew a fastball by him. Two and two. This is the count on Page. Schnitz Paxton helped his team get the win to get to four and two for his record as he fouls it away. Still two and two. Schnitz Paxton faced 30. Six Ks, four walks, five hits, and two earned runs. He then, after that, had just one day off, pitched an inning in the All-Star game. Another 2-2 two -two to Page, bounces in, blocked by Goudreau. Full count with two outs in the bottom of the fifth, 2-2 two -two game, Saginaw looking to break the 2-2 two -two tie. Threw a nice inning in the All-Star game for the North to Lane Schnitz-Paxton, and... Now trying to get back on that regular schedule of rest. 3-2 is grounded into the third base dugout. That will remain a full count on Page. Eighth pitch of the at-bat is coming up. And this will be pitch number 93 for Schnitz Paxton. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Page goes down on strikes. Big swing. Comes up empty, and that is the end well, the of the beats, fifth. The so the Sugar Beats, they get a man to second, who's then cut down, trying to advance to third, and Robinette is stranded at third. So somehow Saginaw does not take the lead. We go to the sixth. Monarchs and Sugar Beats tied at two. This is your home for Monarchs baseball.
Matthew Blunk's first pitch in the sixth. Jake Goodrow takes a ball outside, ball one. Goodrow with a two-run homer in the first. Another pitch over the outside corner, one and one. That's the only runs the Monarchs have been able to muster here in game two. Also a fly out for Goodrell, so he's one for two. One one breaking ball stays up and in. Two balls and a strike. Goodrell, O'Laughlin, Dyke, four, five, and six. In the Monarchs order. Two one. A soft liner will go foul right near Bradley Merritt. Third base coach. Two balls and two strikes. Blunk gets the sign to pitch, and he does. A liner hit back through the middle. A base hit for Goudreau. will pick up his second hit of the game. Hit on the screws by Goudreau. Five hits for the Monarchs are being out hit seven to five in this game, too, but we're all tied up now at two. A sophomore at Northwestern University. Casey O'Laughlin. 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout. He's in on the left side against Blunk. Laughlin swings and skies one right near home. Hool will dart back into the field of play just by home plate for the out. Same put at first is Goudreau. One pitch and an out there for now batting, Matthew Blunk, at the University of who Illinois is just Chair above 40 Pelling, pitches. The right fielder, number four, this being a bullpen game Dyke. for Saginaw, this performance has been much needed from Blunk. Now Andrew Dyke, strike to him, outside corner at the knees, nothing in one. Dyke with a K in the second and a single in the fourth. Goudreau has about a half-step lead over there at first as the ball bounces in for ball one to Dyke. Fans still hanging around and taking in the sights and the sounds here today in Saginaw. 1-1, one, one, another pop-up. This is going into foul ground, trying to get over there. It is Fannin, but he will not as it goes into the vacant bullpen area of the Monarchs. One ball, two strikes, the count. Matthew Blunk's last appearance came two days ago in a win on the road in Xenia. Allowed an earned run, three hits, a strikeout. Face six for the scouts were easily topped by the Sugar Beats that night, 11 to four. Put on the ground towards short, backhanded by Page. His throw across is offline, and that will be an infield single for Andrew Dyke. Second hit of the inning and second hit of the game for Dyke consecutively. It was put into the hole. It was too deep at short for Page to make an accurate throw to first base. And Dyke was able to beat it out. A sophomore at the University of Nebraska. Now Goodrell up to second. Hitter, Dyke is at first with one Kevin out in the sixth. Watson. Monarchs trying to break the 2-2 two -two tie. And now Watson with a soft liner hit towards second. O'Keefe to second for one. Page's throw to first. Double play. A quick turn. These middle infielders have been fantastic here today in turning Double plays, they get another one the here Monarchs, to end the threat in the top of the sixth, and the Monarchs will leave a man on. Matthew Blunt gets through another scoreless inning. 2-2 two -two game, middle of the sixth. Next, you are listening to Monarchs Baseball.
Who's going to come through with the big hit? Both these teams looking for one, but Saginaw have the opportunity to do so first. Bottom of the sixth, and the pitch misses low and outside to Matthew Hool. Ball one. Two singles for Hool today against Lane Schnitz Paxton. He's back out there. Swing and a foul tip. Strike one. Schnitz Paxton, the workhorse for this Monarchs rotation. Despite being where he's at, 95 pitches. If you're Tim Brown and Brad Merritt, you'd like to get him at least through six. 1-1 one, one fastball over the outside corner. One ball and two strikes on Hool. Six is very doable beyond that. We will soon see. The pitch. Hool takes, low and away. Two balls, two strikes. The sharpness factor not quite there for the Lake Erie Monarch pitcher. Not quite like it was back on June 24th against the Richmond Jazz. Swing and a foul ball out of play. Two balls, two strikes. That is the next opponent, in fact, of the Saginaw Sugar Beats coming up here. The game at Cardinal Field on Tuesday and then at Dow Diamond on Wednesday. 2-2. Two -two. Cool. With a fly ball towards left. Schwarzenberger backing up. So a little short of the track, and he'll run it down. Now number one here in the sixth. Again, more of a swing that lifted it instead of driving it out of the park from Hool, who's retired for the first the time. There's Matthew Salkinen. Matt Salkinen. 0 for 2 start to the game for Salkinen. Strikeout and a ground out. Schnitz Paxton delivers. A little bit low. Ball one. Schnitz Paxton threw a complete game shutout, a 2 0 win against the Richmond Jazz back on June 24th. 1 0 is aired over our heads in the third base press box, just down the third base side, a ball and a strike. Allowed just three hits, three walks, struck out eight in the seven inning complete game shutout. Fastball was away from Salkinen. Two and one. And since his first two starts of the year when he allowed nine earned runs through eight and a third innings, two one, Salkinen flies one to center. Backing up is O'Laughlin. And he'll make the catch out number two. Now the sixth the inning will be left up to Sean O'Keefe. Sean O'Keefe. Who struck out in the second and doubled home a run in the fourth to put the first run on the board for Saginaw. And we are tied at two here in the bottom of the sixth with two down. And ever since allowing nine earned runs through his first eight and a third, Schnitz Paxton has allowed no more than two earned runs over his last five starts. Ball one to Sean O'Keefe. Monarchs are four and one during the stretch. Which is outside two and oh. I should correct myself. They are four and oh over his last four starts. Two oh. Fastball over the outside corner, two and one. And he's pitched seven innings or more in three of those last four <laughs> starts. 2-1. Benz O'Keefe away. 3-1. and one. Two outs in the sixth. Tied at two. Monarchs and Sugar Beets. 3-1 on the way. O'Keefe will waste one. Foul. Off to the right of home. Three balls and two strikes. It's Paxton gearing up to turn 22, make it 21 years old, on September 18th. 3-2. O'Keefe watches one skip in front of home. Ball four. Schnitz Paxton will walk his second, make it third batter of the game. No one warming up. It's Schnitz Paxton's responsibility to get through six. How many 
2-2 game here in the now bottom of the sixth, and the batter is Noah Marcou. Noah Marcou. Marcou 0 for 3 with an RBI today. Grounded out in the fourth, and now he pops one up to shallow right. Coming in Dyke, he calls off Prater, makes the catch. That's the final out in the sixth. For the Sugar Beets in their half of the sixth inning. So the Monarchs no get no six hits, innings no at least out of Lane one, Schnitz Paxton as he will have he 110 pitches through six field. innings. The game tied stays tied 2-2 two, two, two. heading to the seventh. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com. Two and one count on Casey Slattery. Top of the seventh inning. Matthew Blunk trying to hold this game at a 2-2 tie. Two seven inning games are at least scheduled to be played today. One of them already in the books. Fastball misses high, three and one. First game won 11 innings with the Monarchs prevailing four to three. Three one from Blunk. Strike at the knees. Inside corner to Slattery. 0 for 2 is Slattery. Reached on a wild pitch on a strikeout in the second. Grounded out to the pitcher in the fifth. 3-2. Slattery with a pop-up. Right side into shallow right. O'Keefe going out. Play is his to make, and he puts it away with two hands. Out number one. 0 for 3 day for Casey Slattery. Here's Zach Schwarzenberger. Zach one for two today is Schwarzenberger with a single and a ground out. Eight, nine, and one in the order. Ball low in the dirt. A ball and no strikes. Matthew Blanc has thrown five innings this year on two separate occasions. 1-0 at the knees for a strike. He got the win both of those times that he threw five innings. Once against the Green Giants, July 15th. Corked one foul on a play, left of home, one and two. Allowing three earned runs, seven hits, six walks. Faced 27 in the win last Sunday across the border in Ontario against the Green Giants. One and two. Bounces in, evens it up at two and two. Blunk also allowed just one run, three hits, three walks, four strikeouts on July 2nd at home against the Mariners. 2-2. Two -two. Schwarzenberger is punched out. Strike three. Matthew Blunk, not a big strikeout pitcher. He's up to two, though, now. And uh, that's four in the game for the Sugar Beats pitching staff. 
But that's going to do it for Matthew Blunk as a new pitcher is coming out of the bullpen. It's a righty coming on. We'll let you know who it is in just a moment. Top of the seventh, nobody on, two ounce, 2-2 two -two game. This is your home for Monarchs Baseball. College. The night is done for Matt Blunk, and his line is complete. Four innings pitched, faced 15 batters through 56 pitches. No runs, four hits, two walks, no, two strikeouts, no walks, hit a batter. And Matthew Blunk will exit this ball game with the bases empty and two outs, and Caleb Balgard swings and drives one to deep center field. Going back on it, still going back, and it one hops the fence. Brady Wood chasing it down. We'll throw it into the cutoff man, Page. Balgard, if he hits that to just about any other part of the ballpark, that may be a home run and a Monarchs lead. Instead, though, it is a two-out double. Monarchs will take it as they try and go into the lead here in the top of the seventh in game two. Two-two two game. Will Prater. Seven hits now for the Monarchs to tie Saginaw in that category. Jack Taggett delivers a pitch outside the zone for ball one. Will Prater has been all over the bases today, a walk, a single, and he also has been hit by a pitch. Ball skips in, two and nothing on Will Prater. So no decision as well for Blunk here in the game. This is all on Jack Taggett to keep this game tied. Swing and a miss. Blowing a heater past Prater. Two and one. Taggett from Kalamazoo College. Six foot, 210 pounds. Junior from Frankenmuth. The two one. Prater, line drive to right, base hit. Charging in Fannin, Caleb Balgard having to get the stop sign and he'll head back to third. Fannin played it properly. He was playing up and he got to the baseball so quickly that Balgard didn't have a shot to come home on the play. Prater has his second single of the contest. And now he'll come out and have a quick word with Jack Taggett, another pitcher up and warming, a righty for the Sugar Beats. Taggett is the third pitcher of the game behind Matthew Blunk and Adam Kowalski, who got the start today. Just a reminder to make sure you follow the Monarchs on social media at GLL underscore Monarchs and also Facebook page, Lake Erie Monarchs. LakeerieMonarchs.com is your home. For all now things batting, Monarchs. The number three, so the mound visit Lambeau. is over. And Alex Lambeau, the number three man in the order, steps in 0 for 3. With two flyouts, and he also is grounded into a fielder's choice. Breaking ball is below the zone. Ball one. 
Jack Taggett's an upcoming junior at Kalamazoo College, appearing in his 12th game. 1-0 at the knees. Taking was Lambeau, strike one. 1-2 one record, a 7.94 ERA for Taggett. 11 and a third innings pitch, eight strikeouts, nine walks, and has surrendered 26 hits. 1-1, one, one, tapper foul, third base side. A ball and two strikes. Jack Taggett took one for the team on June 29th in the 27-8 setback for the Sugar Beats uh, against the Monarchs. All 17 of those runs in the fifth inning of that game were unearned, though. The one-two is fouled away. One ball and two strikes. Taggett got two outs in that inning, gave up 11 unearned runs, eight hits, a walk, a strikeout, and faced 13 in that game. One-two. Just outside. Sugar beats faithful, groans. That one was close. Lambo laying off somehow to stay alive. Righty versus righty matchup, tag it and Lambo. 2-2, two -two. swing and a miss at a ball in the dirt. He's tagged out of there for strike three. And Jack Taggett gets out of a huge jam with runners at the corners. The Monarchs will get two hits, leave two men on, and do not score. Middle of the seventh, the Sugar Beats will look to walk it off. And the Monarchs and the Sugar Beats tied at two. You are listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com. Sean O'Keefe going to try and keep this game tied. Bottom of the seventh inning. Monarchs and Sugar Beets deadlocked at two. And the middle of the order is coming up with Cooper Marshall leading off. Fastball high, ball one. Cooper Marshall, one for three today with a single, a ground out, and a fly out. Just past the seven o'clock hour. Swing and a miss. And it's one and one on Cooper Marshall. Sean O'Keefe, the Western Michigan Bronco, is the third Bronco to pitch in this doubleheader. 1-1, one, one, taking for a strike is Marshall, 1-2. and two. Sean O'Keefe has come in a couple games this year, although it's mostly been a mop-up work to try and log some innings. This is a high leverage situation. 1-2 is grounded foul. Still 1-2. and two. No record for O'Keefe. An 18 ERA, three innings pitch, four strikeouts, four walks, six hits. 
Two games he's pitched in again were against the Green Giants and the Leprechauns. One, two. Low and away. To Cooper Marshall. Two balls and two strikes. Sean O'Keefe from the Ann Arbor area. Celine. Two, two. Popped up foul on the play by Marshall. Seventh pitch of the at bat will be coming. And of course, O'Keefe, in terms of batting this year and catching a 305 average, a homer and 15 RBI. Seventh pitch to Marshall, rung him up, strike three. A great fastball low and away at the knees. And down goes Marshall, who's now one for four in this game. The Here's Brady Wood. Wood. Number 11, Brady Wood. 2-2 game, bottom of the seventh. Brady Wood grounded out in the third. A walk and a hit by pitch for Wood also today. Swings right away and fouls one off over the first base dugout of the Monarchs. Nothing in one. Monarchs 15 and 19. Sugar beats 20 and 15. A one. Curveball at the knees. Outside corner, strike two. We have the final line on Lane Schnitz Paxton, who's going to receive a no decision. That record will stay at four and two. Oh, two. On the ground, over to second. Prater has it. Throws to first and got wood by about a step and a half. Two up, two down for Sean O'Keefe in the bottom of the seventh. We're tied at two. Sean Fannin, the right fielder, two flyouts and a single Sean for Fannin, Fannin today. Monarchs, if they win today, would lock up their first season series victory against a North Division opponent. The pitch at the knees, outside corner strike one. Of course, the season series has not been concluded yet against Grand Lake, who they've split with so far, and Muskegon. The Clippers took two from them up in Muskegon last month. Oh, one chopped foul by Fannin. He's quickly behind two strikes. Monarchs fell in the season series three to one to the Lima Locos. This one will conclude today, either 3-1 Monarchs or tied at 2. 0-2. Oh, Her ball, line to center, dropping fast, a base hit in front of Casey O'Laughlin. Ninth knock of the game for the Sugar Beets. And the bottom of the seventh will continue with the cleanup man. The third which is Ryan Robinette. Ryan Robinette. Two for three is Robinette. Single, a double. And he's also grounded into a fielder's choice. Both teams with two runs on eight hits. No errors. Throw over to check the runner, Sean Fannin. He's back in standing. The pitch. Robinette, the ball bounces away from Jake Goudreau. And up to second base goes Sean Fannin on the wild pitch. So O'Keefe picks up his first, and that's the second wild pitch on the Monarchs here today. Goudreau had to make his way around Barry Gross to get to the baseball, but wouldn't have mattered anyway. Fannin had a good start towards second base. Tim Brown's going to have a, a quick word with Jake Goudreau. They're looking in the vicinity of his left hand, but they're now heading back to the dugout. 1-0 count on Ryan Robinette. The winning run is now at second base. Pretty good speed at second, and Sean Fannin. O'Keefe from the first base side of the rubber throws the 1 0. Breaking ball outside, and it's 2 0 on Sean O'Keefe. O 
Keefe is 6'4", 235 pounds, upcoming sophomore at Western Michigan. Last game he played out in the field was July 12th against the Scouts. Went 0 for 2 and what was a 6-2 victory for the Monarchs on that night. 2-0. And it skips away in front of Goudreau to the backstop. Fannin rounds third and thinks about coming home, but instead we'll stop right there. Two wild pitches on Sean O'Keefe have moved the base runner all the way to third. So now anything could potentially bring the runner across. Another misfired pitch, a pass ball, a single, double, you name it. The man is just 90 feet from home. Saginaw faithful hoping for a walk-off. Three and zero count on Robinette with two outs in the seventh and a two-two game. Pitch is low, ball four, and Gaudreau just nearly was able to keep that in front of him. Runners at the corners now. Fannin at third, Robinette at first. Now Daniel Page, Page is the, the batter. Beats, the a walk, a pop out, and a strikeout today Daniel for Daniel Page. Page. This is the 18th inning of action between these two teams today. Saginaw wanting to conclude the series now. Runner takes off, Robinette. It's a fastball outside to Page, ball one. That walk that Page drew came in the second, popped out in foul ground in the third, went down swinging in the fifth. Robinette able to easily move up to second base. But that run does not matter. It's the run at third that does. 1-0 over the outside corner. 1-1 one one to Page. Clouds settling back in here at Cardinal Field. And Sean O'Keefe will step off. Gain his lead at third is Fannin. And at second, Robinette. 1-1. One, one. Swing, fly ball, deep left field, hooking towards the corner, and it's foul. Just out in front of it was Daniel Page. Showing that home run power. He came up a little bit short of the fence and was just to the left of the line. So one and two. Strike away from getting out of the jam is O'Keefe. One, two on the way. And Page takes high and away. Two balls and two strikes. Fans have the umbrellas up. Just light sprinkles coming down here at Cardinal Field. Break even pitch. Page rung up, strike three, a fastball over the outside corner. Page goes down, and for the second consecutive game, Free baseball. We go to the eighth. Saginaw and Lake Erie tied at two. You are listening to Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com.
Seven innings, not enough. We go to the eighth in a 2-2 game as Jake Goudreau takes strike one from Jack Taggett. He's back to work. A one. And Goudreau will look at a fastball low, one and one. Goudreau, two for three today. Two-run homer and a single. Also has flown out. Taggett sails one up and in. Two balls and a strike. Kyle Bischoff is going out down the first base side to start warming up. The 2-1 skips in. Three balls and a strike. So the Monarchs got an inning out of Sean O'Keefe at least here today to give his team a chance to try and win it in extra innings as the rain starts to come down with relative pretty hard here in Saginaw. Foul ball hit to the third base side. Full count on Goudreau. And hence why the umbrellas were up in preparation for this rain to start coming down. 3-2. Goudreau is taking ball four. And I think he started heading back towards the dugout. He thought that was going to be strike three. Instead, it's inside for a ball. And the leadoff man is on for the Monarchs here in the eighth. We might get a pinch Nobody, runner. The center fielder, number 33, and I think Casey we're going to. O'Loughlin. Casey O'Laughlin is striding to the plate. Griffin Mazur wants time called. And now it will be granted. Griffin Mazur will pinch run for Jake Goudreau to give them a little more speed on the base paths here in the eighth. And he can always come in and catch Good afterwards. Monarch. Mazur caught the entire first game, first base, which was 11 innings long. A junior at the University of California, Irvine, number 18, So he Griffin may have Mazur. to catch a few more innings here today. Casey O'Laughlin 0 for 3. He squares the bunt, pulls back, and it's in the dirt for a ball. Mazur is the scamper back to the first base bag. He had a huge secondary lead. 2-2 Two -two ball game, top half of the eighth. Jack Taggett trying to work around a leadoff walk. 1-0 downstairs. 2-0 to O'Laughlin. Sugar Beats trying to stay close in the standings with the St. Clair Green Giants and the Lima Locos. They are not far off. 2-0 fastball in there for a strike. O'Laughlin pulled back for some reason on a well-placed pitch. 2-1. On the way, Bunt put down the third base line. It is a gem. Robin Ettis to throw a seed to first, and he just got him. Griffin Mays are able to move up to second base. That's about as good of execution as you could ask for on a sack Bunt. 5-3 put out of O'Laughlin, and Mazer moves up to second. He is the tie-breaking run. 2-2 contest in the eighth, and Andrew Dyke will be pinch hit for by Robert Bell. Dyke had himself quite a ball game. He was two for three with a strikeout tonight. But Robert Bell had a pinch hit, increased the percentages as well, and Bell has played hero before with a walk-off win against Galleon earlier this season. Trying to vault his team in front here. Pitch is high and in ball one to Robert Bell. So Andrew Dyke's night is done. Bell, we'll see if he takes over in right. Pitch to Bell is fouled off of the catcher. One ball and one strike. Bell with a 284 average, three homers, 18 RBIs, appearing in his 30th game of the season. From Bethune Cookman. He is a wild cat. Also from Palm Coast, Florida. Fastball high. Two balls and a strike. Jack Taggett delivering to Bell. Third baseman Robinette playing in the cutout at third, watching the runner. High fastball that Bell chased. Strike two.
Jake Goodrow will now go out and help warm up Kyle Bischoff. In the bullpen down the first base side. <coughs> Taggett taking his time to ready himself. Lowers the glove to blow his bell. 2-2. Up and in. Go up the count on Bell. Last appearance for Taggett came July 14th against the Green Giants. That was eight days ago, last Saturday. And he took the loss. 3-2. Bell draws a walk. Second walk of the inning from Jack Taggett. There is action down in the bullpen. On the third base side, a righty soft tossing. Keegan Watson will step up for the fourth time today, 0 for 3. The designated Fly out, line out, grounded into a double Keegan play. Watson. That double play came in the sixth. One out in the eighth, 2-2 two -two game. Monarchs trying to break the tie. Watson will immediately air one out of play foul to the right of home. And that loss to the Green Giants for the Sugar Beats. Taggett allowed four earned runs, four hits, three walks, and a strikeout while facing 11 in two innings of work. Here's the pitch. Watson looks at strike two at the knees. He must have thought it was low. But it was just about right there. Taggett and who will agree? 0-2, line to right, sinking. It'll drop for a base hit. Robert Bell is the scamper to get to second. The throw comes in to Marshall, who cuts off the throw from the plate. And Keegan Watson will single. And the threat gets more threatening here in the top of the eighth. With the base is loaded for the first time today for the Monarchs. And that will bring up Casey Slattery. The first baseman, number 44. Who's looking Casey for that breakthrough Slattery. hit. 0 for 3 is Slattery with a strikeout, a ground out, and a pop out. They're playing for the double play up the middle. Strike. Nope. Ball outside to Slattery. 1 and 0. Tag it out of the windup. Throws. Strike over the inside corner at the knees. Good equalizer, one and one count. But before that, tough appearance for Taggett against the Green Giants. Had two straight scoreless outings against the Sellers and the Steam. Check swing on a ball in the dirt. Did he go? And Frank Barquette says he did. One and two. One out in the eighth, a 2-2 tie. Bases loaded for Slattery. The one-two. And low, it skips away. Now trying to come home here is Griffin Mazur. The throw, the tag, they got him. And Griffin Mazur is out. The tag applied by Taggett. And Mazur's pretty livid, but that will be the second out of the inning. Robert Bell will move up to third, and Keegan Watson up to second. And Tim Brown going to come out and have a not-so-kind exchange with Barry Gross, the home plate umpire. And so the count will be 2-2 two and two on Slattery, though the tie-breaking run still just 90 feet away. It's Robert Bell this time. That was a big moment in this game. The Sugar Beats able to keep this game tied. And Frank Barquette pointing at the uh, first base dugout. I don't know if something was said in the dugout. Warning was given to Griffin Mazur, who was not happy with the call. Two and two count, two outs, two two game here in the top of the eighth. Second extra inning game we've played here today in Saginaw. Is 
Slattery waiting on the 2-2 from Taggett. Fastball is put in the air to left center field. Wood trotting over, makes the play. Out number three, and the Monarchs miss a big opportunity to go into the lead. Two walks and a single in the inning, but the Monarchs leave two men on. We venture to the bottom of the eighth. Monarchs and Sugar Beets tied at two. You are listening to Monarchs Baseball. No errors, and two left on. Monarchs miss a huge opportunity to go into the lead, and now they have to try and hold this desperate team at bay, the Saginaw Sugar Beets, as we'll head to the bottom of the eighth. Two runs, eight hits both ways, no errors for either side. Matthew Houle. In the batter's box, pitches low, ball one from Sean O'Keefe, who was narrowly able to escape the bottom of the seventh. Runners at second and third, but got the strikeout of Daniel Page. 1-0 to Hool. Pass ball in there for strike one. Salkinen and O'Keefe do up. A long-awaited matchup could happen in this inning. 1-1. One, one. Hool grounds it over towards short, charging Lambeau, throws across, Slattery stretches, got him. Out number one, it's Matthew Hool rolls out to start the eighth. Now Matthew Salkin, and he's 0 for 3. The a strikeout, hitter, a ground out, and a fly 16, out. 19th inning of action that these two teams have played today. Making up for lost time. Now these teams did not get to play yesterday through the rain in the area. Now Matthew Salkinen will... Line the first pitch that he sees from O'Keefe to center for a base hit. Hit number nine for the Saginaw Sugar Beets. They're going to bring out a pinch runner. And Ryan Missile will do the pinch running for Matthew Salkinen. Missile very speedy. This team has a ton of speed. Have a pinch runner coming and in we'll now see just how beats. aggressive a they get. Sean O'Keefe against Mitchell, Sean O'Keefe. The long-awaited matchup and happens. Strikeout, a double, and a walk baseman, for O'Keefe today. And he also has scored a run. So which Sean O'Keefe are you rooting for? You be the judge. O'Keefe will throw over to first and airmail the throw. Ryan Missiles moving up to second. He's thinking third, and he's going to get there as Sean O'Keefe airmailed the throw from the mound. And a two-base error. This has been a clean game up to this point, but a big miscue from O'Keefe, who turned and fired really quickly over to first base, completely missed the throw. And so now a completely different situation. One out and a man at third. Now O'Keefe just pretty much wants to put the ball in play anywhere. 
And Missile will have a good chance of scoring. Errors have really done in the Monarch season in big moments. We saw it one really cost them against the Lima Locos. They lost a game due to an error. And that could cost them here today. Strike one to O'Keefe over the inside corner at the knees. The two players that frequently get misplaced for the other one. The O'Keefe from Western Michigan or the O'Keefe from the other school. And the ball misses low and away, one and one. O'Keefe from Adrian College, a sophomore from Standish, Michigan. 1-1 one, one. over the inside corner, strike two. Good breaking ball from O'Keefe. One out in the eighth, and the winning run is 90 feet away. Infield in, 1-2, O'Keefe takes one high and tight. A fastball, two balls and two strikes. Ryan Missile with a couple step lead at third. O'Keefe's pitch. Curveball swing and a miss. O'Keefe strikes out. He was ahead of the breaking ball. And O'Keefe has the second straight opportunity to get out of a jam unscathed with the winning run just 90 feet away. But in the last inning, you had Jake Goudreau, the catcher for Sean O'Keefe. Now you have Griffin Mazur, who's catching in this inning. And the pitch is low. It bounces out of the glove of Mazur. May have cost O'Keefe a strike, 1-0. and So Mazur has to have a heads up. Robert Bell, the new right fielder in this inning, 1-0. And Marcou will take outside, 2-0. 2-2 game, bottom of the eighth. Saginaw hoping to walk off the 2-0. That's outside again. Three balls and no strikes. Bischoff was warming up with Goudreau, but they have now returned to the dugout. 3-0. Marcus swings over the top of a fastball at the green light. And missed it. That would have been ball four. Wasn't really close. The pitch. Marcou, a ground ball towards short. This is going to be a tough play for Lambeau. Fields throws to first. They got him out. And we go to the ninth. The Monarchs continue to stay alive by the skin of their teeth as they work around a hit and an error. In a scoreless eighth, we go to the ninth, tied at two. You are listening to Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com.
Brandon Evans becomes the fourth pitcher of the game. This is the 20th inning these two teams have played here today. We are in the top of the ninth of game two. Fastball high and end ball one to Zach Schwarzenberger. One for three with a single. A ground out and a strikeout is Schwarzenberger today. And the 1-0 gets away for ball two. Brandon Evans, the new hurler for the Saginaw Sugar Beets. Jack Taggett getting himself out of some big trouble. Fastball high and away, 3-0. and In the last inning to keep his team alive. And Sean O'Keefe has done so on the other side. 3-0, ball four, and there's a four-pitch walk to start the ninth. Brandon Evans with an 0-1 record of 14.92 ERA. 11th appearance, 12 and two-thirds innings, third nine strikeouts, Caleb nine walks and 22 hits allowed. Now Caleb Balgar on top of the order. Schwarzenberger thought about it. Instead doesn't take off and the pitch is low, ball one. Balgard doubled in the seventh but was left 90 feet from home. He is one for four. One out. Runner does take off. Balgard lines it into the third base dugout. Hit and run just has not panned out today for the Monarchs. Ball and a strike. Brandon Evans' last appearance was against the Green Giants eight days ago. Last Saturday, the 14th. Two-thirds of an inning, three earned runs, four hits, strikeout, faced eight. 1-1 one, one from Evans. High gets off the catcher's glove to the backstop. And that will be a wild pitch given to Brandon Evans. The runner, Zach Schwarzenberger, was beginning to take off from first, and that may have influenced the catch from Hool a little bit, but it was a wayward throw from Evans in the first place. 2-1. Nice block by Hool behind home plate on a dirt ball. 3-1. and one. Another righty up and warming for Saginaw. Down the third base side. I'm hearing it's Billy Blair who pitched in the first game. Balgard will fly one foul. Just missing the batting cages out near the right field corner of the Saginaw Valley State softball complex. Three balls and two strikes on Balgar. Nobody out in the ninth and a runner at second. Two, two game. We've been tied since the bottom of the fourth. 3-2. Grounded foul again. Third base dugout. Seventh pitch will be coming up. Level stance for Balgard against the righty Evans, 3-2. And Balgard swings and lifts one foul. Out of play, heading well out of the ballpark. Jim DeSena, our GM, was out near the front gate, and that ball went over his head not too far. Always keep your heads up near the ballpark. Eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up for Caleb Balgard. Brandon Evans doing the throwing. 3-2, Balgard pops it up, got underneath one. Right towards second base, waiting for it to come down from the heavens is O'Keefe to put it away. Round number one. Stain put it second in Schwarzenberger. Now so Balgard did not the move him over physically. A wild Blair. pitch was able to move him over. Now Brandon Evans will deal with Will Prater, who has been a menace for the Sugar Beats to handle in this second game. Two singles, a walk, and a hit by pitch. He's also scored a run. Just got a piece of it, fouled it back to the screen. No balls and a strike on Prater. Brandon Evans is from Beaverton, Michigan. He is 5'8", 165 pounds. Upcoming sophomore at Rochester College. 
Monarchs have seen him before. In the June 28th matchup, 0-1 sails high, 1-1. One one. That was the 8-4 victory for Saginaw. Evans allowed an earned run and two hits, two strikeouts, face seven, and got five outs. 1-1. One, one. Inside to Prater. 2-1. and one. After 7.30 here now in Saginaw, and there are no lights at the ballpark. So that is hopefully not going to be an issue as we go forward here. 2-1 is high for ball three. Three straight balls to Will Prater. But it's a little darker than normal because of all the clouds that have been up above today. And there's more dark clouds to the north. 3-1, swing and a miss by Prater. He's not happy with himself. Chased a bad one, which would have been ball four. Full count. Schwarzenberger patiently at second, waiting for an opportunity to move. 3-2. High and away, ball four. Second walk of the inning for Brandon Evans. And we'll see if... Coach Floyd is going to pull the plug here on Evans, who has thrown already 18 pitches and has just one out to show for it. Evans will come out. Billy Blair back in. He pitched in game one, and he's going to pitch in game two. Top of the ninth continues after this, a 2-2 game in the ninth. Monarchs threatening. You are listening to Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com. Billy Blair will come on to pitch Ball here for the Saginaw Sugar Beats the for the shortstop. second time three, in this Alex afternoon, Lambeau. this doubleheader. And we'll see if he can keep the Monarchs at bay. Alex Lambeau takes strike one. Lambeau for four today with a couple of punch outs. Runners at first and second, one out in the ninth. Darkness is descending upon us pretty quickly. Here in Saginaw, no lights in the stadium. 0-1 fastball is outside, a ball and a strike. Billy Blair took the loss in the opener of this doubleheader. Through two innings, faced eight batters, one strikeout, one walk, one hit, one earned run. Through 28 pitches. And now Blair, they have a man picked off, and Schwarzenberger was just able to get back. He hesitated going back to second, and Blair hesitated with the throw over towards first or second. Blair from the stretch. And the pitch. 
A little bit low, and it's 2-1 and one now on Alex Lambeau. Blair, the fifth pitcher of this game two that has found its way into the ninth inning. And again, Blair will step off the back of the mound, looking in the direction of Schwarzenberger. Prater's at first. The wind has died down. Rain still looming about. 2-1. Big swing by Lambeau. Just couldn't slow it down. Even count, two balls, two strikes. One out in the ninth, 2-2 two, two tie. Brandon Evans with a third of an inning. Phase three, walk two. At a wild pitch, he's responsible for the two men on base. The 2-2. Two, two. And a ground ball hit towards third. Could be two. Robinette bounced off the base runner and will go towards first. Now trying to come home with Schwarzenberger, but he did not. The throw from Robinette hit... Zach Schwarzenberger. Now, Robinette's pleading that that was base runner interference, and Schwarzenberger is pleading his case to stay on third base, and he will. So that will be an error charged to Robinette, enabling the bases to be loaded. First error of the night for the Saginaw Sugar Beets. Now batting. And I thought the Blake Monarchs Patrick. error was going to do in Griffin them Baker. in the eighth. But now a very hairy situation for Billy Blair. And the pitch swing and a miss by Mazer for strike one. Mazer taking his first at bat here in game two of this twin bill. Mazer from California, Irvine, a junior from Moo Park, California. Mazer pops one up. That will get foul out of play to the right of home. No balls and two strikes. Mazer hitting 259 with two homers and nine runs batted in. It really is getting quite dark out there on the field. The Saginaw Sugar Beets white uniform still sticking out. 0-2, Mazer lines one, foul down the third base line. And will remain nothing in two. One out in the ninth, base is loaded, tied at two. Some raindrops coming down again here in Saginaw. And that's hence the reason it's so dark, part of that reason that it's so dark here at Cardinal Field. And Billy Blair will step off. Oh, two. Mazer, a chopper, gets past the mound. This will get a run in. The throw over towards first is instead a ball put into his back pocket. Infield single for Griffin Mazer, and the Monarchs finally break through with an RBI infield single from Mazer, driving in his 10th run of the season. And the Monarchs take the lead by a score of 3-2. to two. The center fielder, Lambeau up to second, Prater up to third. Good job by Mazer just to put the ball in play and give his man a chance to score. And he did. Now Casey O'Laughlin, strike one to him. 3-2 <laughs> game in the ninth. Ninth hit of the game for the Monarchs. Each team has nine. And O'Laughlin swings and flies one to deep right field. Fannin backing up will make the catch in right center, tagging up and coming home is Will Prater, he'll score with ease. Up to third goes Alex Lambeau as well. Sacrifice fly for Casey O'Laughlin brings in another one. And the Monarchs have put up a two spot here in the ninth to take a two run lead, it's four to two. Casey O'Laughlin picking up his 11th run batted in of the season. Now batting the right fielder Six, and the runs may be Robert coming in just Bell. in the nick of time with it getting quite dark. 
And the rain coming down here in Saginaw. Pitch outside to Robert Bell, ball one. So Brandon Evans, those two walks that he had, both runs coming in to score. So that's his final line. The pitch. And it's outside and low. Two balls and no strikes on Robert Bell, who walked in the eighth and was left on the bases. Billy Blair comes with a 2-0. And it bounces in to the plate and hits the mask of Houle staying in front. Three balls and no strikes. A hard rain coming down now in Saginaw. Wind blowing in towards the home plate area from out behind left field. 3-0. And it bounces in, ball four. Billy Blair struggling to find the strike zone. And the bases will be loaded again, full of Monarchs. Lambo still at third. Griffin Mazer moves up to second, and Robert Bell is at first. Eighth batter of the inning is That's Keegan Watson. Hitter, number 28, Keegan Watson. One for four is Keegan Watson today. Singled in the eighth. Pitch to him, and it's outside, ball one. He also grounded into a, a big double play in the sixth with a man just 90 feet from home. These teams have had chances to score runs, and it's finally the Monarchs who are the team that's been able to break through in this ninth inning. Bouncer in, two balls and no strikes. Blair might be having some issues gripping the baseball. The rain coming down pretty steadily here at Cardinal Field. <laughs> Lambeau at third, Mazur at second, Bell at first. <laughs> Billy Blair. We'll deal the two out. And it's high and outside. Three balls and no strikes. <laughs> Billy Blair is from Concordia University, a junior from St. Charles, Michigan. 6'2", 210 pounds. Trying to get out of this jam. 3-0, strike at the knees, outside corner. Keegan Watson will still be up there. All the players huddled underneath the dugout now. None of them really standing on the rails anymore with the rain coming down. 3-1 check swing. A little liner foul towards the first base portion of the field. 3-2 and two on Keegan Watson. Billy Blair comes set, first base side of the rubber. The payoff pitch, low ball four, and another run will come in. Keegan Watson will force in a run by drawing a walk. Watson, his fifth RBI of the season, and the Monarchs are getting a little more comfortable of a lead. It's five to two now here in the the first baseman, Top of the ninth. And the ninth Slattery. batter of the inning coming up. Casey Slattery still looking for that first hit. 0 for 4. Was on base once. We reached on a wild pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. That rain coming down more and more steadily. As we play with two outs in the ninth. 0-1. Ground ball. Hit over to second. Should be knocked down to O'Keefe, who will make the play and throw him out for the final out here in the top of the ninth. But the Monarchs get three runs, and they take a 5-2 lead to the bottom of the ninth inning. You are listening to Monarchs Baseball on MonarchsRadio.com.
Cooper Marshall is up, swing and a miss for a strike. That's nothing in one. Cooper Marshall, Brady Wood, and Sean Fannin are the batters. And Cooper Marshall with a ground ball into right field for a base hit to start things off. It is an absolute downpour out there right now. As Cooper Marshall grounded one past Casey Slattery. Of course, it is an official game and has been since the fifth, with this being a seven inning game. The center fielder. And it's been a long, drawn out day. Been playing since 1.30 with a half hour break. Monarchs five and the Sugar Beats two. Now a little number will go foul. Down the first baseline, nothing in one on Brady Wood, who is 0 for 2 with a walk and a hit by pitch here today. The fans have gone scrambling to find cover. As wouldn't make sense for many of us. Brady Wood, a ground ball over to third. Balgard throws it into right field. And up to third goes Cooper Marshall on the throwing error from Caleb Balgard. So runners at first and third with nobody out here in the bottom of the ninth. And Saginaw all of a sudden has the tying run at the plate in the form of Sean Fannin. Two singles and two flyouts for Fannin today. Home plate umpire calling for new baseballs. Monarchs have to f try and find a way to wiggle out of this and send us home with a 5-2 victory. The right fielder, number 19, and now with Sean the way it is out there and sagging on the door, knocking on the door of scoring a couple runs here, you gotta try and finish this. Sean Fannin takes the ball high and in, one and up. Monarchs have seen a lot of rain this year. This entire league has seen a lot of rain this year, but this may be the worst of it that they have played through. Sean Fannin with a foul ball hit, one ball and one strike. There's now some standing water behind home plate as this recent deluge has really hurt the uh, field conditions. 1-1, one, one. and it's inside to Fannin. Two balls and a strike. And I figured Billy Blair was struggling to grip the baseball in the top of the ninth inning when it wasn't a complete downpour, but I'm sure it's brutal for O'Keefe now. 2-1 is inside. Fannin backs away from it, 3-1. and one. Boy, when I mean, you've played 20 innings like these two teams have today, the last thing you really want to do is delay this game. And the problem is, is that the field does not have uh, lights, so we're kind of running out of light as well with it being after 8 o'clock here in Saginaw. Sean O'Keefe is right now pounding his foot on the mound and Brad Merritt's out there as well to have a quick word to see what's going on. They're going to bring out some materials to try and help Sean O'Keefe So we're going to see some field maintenance here at the bottom of the ninth inning at a 5-2 game. This is a, a definite first. 3-1 count. Sean Fannin is up against Sean O'Keefe. And they're throwing some, some turfus down right around home plate as well. And the thing is, this is a very important game for Saginaw trying to lock up the number two seed. They're chasing St. Clair for that number two seed right now. And Lima, of course, the number one seed, three games ahead of them at this point in time. Let's take a look and, and see what's going on, actually, with the scores around the league. And we know that the Green Giants won game one against the Xenia Scouts earlier on by a score of two to one. Another earlier final, the Muskegon Clippers beat the Grand Lake Mariners by a count of seven to two. So the Clippers... Uh, continued to do harm to the Grand Lake Mariners' opportunities to try and make the postseason. Grand Lake has been in quite a rough stretch. 
the Green Giants actually did polish off a sweep today by beating the Scouts two to nothing. So they outscore them four to one in the doubleheader and win both games. So St. Clair at this point is now 23 and 14. They are a game back of Lima in the in the standings and two games back in the loss column to the Lima Locos who have two less losses. Southern Ohio Copperheads, 4-3. They beat the Joes in game one of a twin bill, and they're uh, trying to get that second game up and running in Athens, Ohio. Cincinnati Steam, they are leading the Richmond Jazz big time, 8-1 in the top of the seventh. Bottom of the fifth in Muskegon, 3-0 Clippers in front of the Mariners in game two. Leprechauns and Locos playing just a singular game now in Lima tonight, 1-0 Irish Hills is the leader. And the Galleon Graders lead the Licking County Settlers 4-0, bottom of the second. So the turfus has been laid. Tim Brown is out to have a word with both Frank Barquette and Barry Gross to get some clarification here on the situation at hand with the uh, Saginaw Sugar Beats trying to rally from down three, 5-2 in the bottom of the ninth inning. The first two men have reached a single for Cooper Marshall, and Brady Wood was able to reach on a throwing error by Caleb Balgard. 3-1, Fannin fouls it back. And the count is full three and two. So it's still raining at least slightly down there. That's at least a little calmer than it was a moment ago. It's still coming down hard, though. 3-2, and Fannin grounds one just foul to the left of the third base line. Fannin, and on the right side against the righty, O'Keefe. And the 3-2, and it sails to the backstop. Fannin will walk. Coming in to score is Cooper Marshall, on the wild pitch, and now it is a 5-3 game here in the bottom of the ninth. Tying runs on the base paths. Don't look now with that tying run on the base paths. Now Ryan Robinette. A single, a double, a walk, and a fielder's choice for Robinette. The pitch bounces in. Now the runner taking off for third, and Brady Wood will be safe. Now batting the third baseman, wild pitch will go against Sean O'Keefe, who will pick up his third wild pitch of the contest. Sean O'Keefe's really the only arm, so he's got to figure it out for the Monarchs here. Pitch is low and away, two balls and no strikes. Nobody out, still in the bottom of the ninth in a 5-3 game. The pitch, Robinette swinging for the fences, came up empty, two and one. <laughs> and it's low and away. Robinette was trying to bunt, pulls back and takes the ball three. Three and one, so a stolen base for Sean Fannin allows that tying run to move up to second base. And now we're going to have a couple people come on to the field. Bradley Merritt wants to have a word with Sean O'Keefe. Jim DeSena is out there as well. And we're going to have the GMs huddle up with the home plate umpires, Barry Gross and also Frank Barquette. Field conditions are quickly becoming unplayable at this point, And Sean O'Keefe is just struggling, honestly, to throw a pitch right now. And uh, obviously the need is to try and get this game in, but it is an official game at this point. If the rain doesn't settle down, but again, darkness is another factor that we are battling here at Saginaw Valley State. And a lot of rain. Brad Merritt, a former pitcher, is out there. And now the uh, players are gonna be pulled off the field. So we're going to go into at least a delay here, and we'll see what happens. But it will be tough to try and resume from this point forward because of how sloppy the field is at this point. Saginaw, of course, trying to mount a rally 
to get a comeback victory. And uh, Coach Floyd as well having a, a word with the umpires, but it really is unplayable at this point. Frank Barquette along with Barry Gross. They're walking off the diamond towards the third base side, and they're going to call the game. So the Monarchs are going to get the win today by a final count of 5-3 to three as the uh, the conditions really just are not playable whatsoever. And the uh, Monarchs will win it by a final count of 5-3 to three here today. As the uh, winner will be Sean O'Keefe, who is picking up the victory here today. O'Keefe improves his record to 1-0 and on the year with the win, and the loss will fall to Brandon Evans, who has no balls and two, no wins and two losses now on the year. It's going to be almost a three-hour game here, two hours and 55 minutes. Second game. So we played almost three hours each game, so six hours of game time, and the Saginaw Sugar Beets are going to fall in today's game uh, to fall to 20 and 16. They get swept in the doubleheader by the Monarchs. The Monarchs improved to 16 and 19. That's going to do it here from, uh, from Saginaw Valley State University. As one final time, the Monarchs get the win by a final count of 5-3. We appreciate you tuning in. I'm Kevin Peel saying good night. You have been listening to Lake Erie Monarchs Baseball on monarchsradio.com.